Hello, hello, is this thing on? <laughs> All right, hello everybody, or you know, just AP Bio students. Um, what I wanna do real quick is give you a um, short um, list, no, an exhaustive but quick list of things that you should be thinking about when you do any FRQ, and especially for the AP test uh, this year, 2020, okay? Because it's gonna be two FRQs, free response questions, zero multiple choice questions. It will be over the course of 45 minutes, and then you have five minutes to upload, meaning that you should be taking about 22 minutes on each of the two free response questions. Chances are they're gonna have four parts, A, B, C, D. Not really sure, we'll see, okay? But that seems like a reasonable amount for the time. Could go to E, could go to F, we will see, all right? So, what do you need to think about when you get to the FRQ, okay? First, don't start at the beginning. Start wherever you feel most comfortable and then skip around like crazy, wherever your mind takes you. If your mind takes you to the visual stuff, look at that first, then maybe you look back at the beginning, the prompt, then maybe you look to part A, then back to the prompt, back to the picture, part B, right? Okay. so. You wanna not be too concerned about starting at the beginning and going through all the end and reading every word, okay? Because you're gonna to have to read and reread and jump back and forth and refer back to these things multiple times. So the more time that you spend at the beginning just reading the prompt is a waste of time, okay? It's not literature, it's not a novel, okay? Feel free to skip around. Science you have to refer back to and, and reference and whatnot, okay? And they'll ask you to do stuff like that. So if you feel comfortable with, um, with the prompt, like you start reading it and you're seeing the vocab words and you're like, oh, I get these vocab words, go for it, okay? If you look at the graph and you're like starting to get it right at the point where you start to feel like uncomfortable or you're like, <clears throat> okay, I've kind of tapped out on my knowledge, it should be about three, four minutes in or something, then I need you to just, you have to go to the question if you haven't already yet. Now that will be part A. No, go to part A, look at part A. Now there might be two parts to part A. Be sure as you move through these A, B, C, D, that you take them step by step, part by part, okay? Flooding your brain by reading A, B, C, and D and all the different parts therein is going to just stress you out, okay? So start with the first sentence, whatever A says, said, describe this, did a little uh, period, just do that. Even if there's more there, you can get to that later. Write the answer in, type it down, whatever, okay? Because you will be able to either type on your phone, type on your computer, or handwrite things and take a pic and send it in, okay? So whatever's most fastest. now. Most fastest. Now, you should have, whether you plan on writing your answers on a piece of paper, you should always have paper nearby to take notes, okay? Whether you actually use it or not, the extension of your brain onto paper is the most important thing you can do as a learning individual human being on this planet in this time. Okay, so make sure you've got it so you're ready to take a quick little note or anything that you wanna refer back to. Doesn't have to be your answer spot, okay? So practice with this on your AP Classroom FRQs as you go through this, okay? So, bite by bite, always have something to write on, start where you feel most comfortable, bounce around, back and forth, um, and uh, the structure of the questions, what you can kind of expect when you're going into this, okay? You should expect that the first part is gonna be basic knowledge of biology, not specific to that question, okay? All the questions are specific examples of a general concept. So if the general concept is gene regulation, the specific example is the lac operon. If the general concept is artificial selection, then the specific example might be um, the size of corn and uh, selection over, you know, 100 years, okay? If, okay, right, so the first question is just gonna just ask you something basic in general about like, oh, how do cells operate in general? How do living things operate in general? How are proteins made in general, okay? Whereas, of course, the whole prompt is gonna be based on the, something specific. That's what you'll see in part B and C, most likely. You will then move into skills, okay? Then you'll have to demonstrate some skills. What they're gonna ask you for there is like, can you develop a... Um, a scientific study. Do you know independent variable, dependent variable? Do you know what controls are? Do you know why the scientists did the things that they did? Okay, and can you analyze a graph? 
At that point, it is your discrete knowledge of can you turn data into a graph or can you understand how the graph came from data? Can you extract the data from the graph? or can you take the data and turn it into a graph? Those are what I call skills. That's gonna be the next thing that they come come at you with, with part B and part C, okay? So you need to have those strong skills. Then, the end, they're always gonna end with something which I would like to call theory, okay? So it's just gonna be like, can you think about science? Can you understand why something was done? Or can you imagine that it could be done in a different way? Or um, can you hypothesize? Can you support some sort of a idea, um, a hypothesis? Can you justify, support a claim? Um, all these words matter a lot, okay? So when they say something like identify, they're looking for a single sentence. When they say something like explain or describe, and they'll put all these vocab words in bold. When they say explain or describe, that's like two sentences minimum, okay? Whenever you go to describe or explain something, you need to be citing the data that is given in the problem, okay? You need to be using an excessive amount of vocab. All the vocab you have in your brain from the whole year, okay, is going to be better than just saying, oh, well, you know, we make proteins by making uh, RNA from DNA, and, and then, you know, we, uh, we, we make the protein and it folds up and then you have a functional protein. It's like, you're missing a lot of vocab in there. Transcription, translation, RNA polymerase, ribosome, uh, RNA processing, splicing, um, you are missing protein synthesis, uh, and you're also missing primary conformation, secondary conformation, polypeptide chain, peptide bonds, okay? All that vocab in there, you need to be inserting it at all points throughout your answers in the FRQ, like crazy, okay? Now don't go stupid and just like spit off, or create like a bulleted list of vocab, okay, that you think might apply, okay? You need to actually use it intelligently, but if you feel it applies and you can describe it and use it intelligently, that's definitely what you need to do to get points, okay? So um, <clears throat> you go from knowledge to skills theory, as you move through parts A, B, C, D, and potentially E, okay? Then, um, da, 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 da. okay, you need to make sure you cite the data. I believe I said that. You need to use full sentences, not bullet points, period, okay? Um, da, 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 da. That's it. Thanks for joining. Good luck.